Hello and welcome to Check It Out with Rich. Um, as you can tell, we're not camping. Uh, this is our semi-travel mode. Um, we got back from the Hershey show about three weeks ago, I believe. And while we were there, I picked something up I've been wanting for a while. And that is the Cole RV AC Connect. Uh, they were given a little bit of a discount at the show um, online. I think it's $85, and I think we got it at the show for $75. I did go on our website to see what shipping would be to me, and uh, shipping was free, so that's not too bad. All right, let me show you what all came in the uh, bag. And I guess this is how they ship it, too. I can't see why not. Uh, they do have a QR code on here for directions there are no directions that come inside the bag um, this is the AC connect and this will hook up in here and they also sent you some foil tape now I'll, I'll probably use this up but I, I want to redo everything up there if it needs it so I got another roll here okay so what this has is they call this a uh, silicone gasket or seal whatever and uh, I, when we got back to our camper from the show, I took this down and put this up in there, and it holds pretty good. I had to get a little pry bar to get it back out. So um, I don't know if maybe uh, if in time, if it'll end up sticking real bad, if maybe if you take plumber's grease or uh, silicone grease and put on there just so it's easier to get out. I don't know. I may actually send them an email and ask them that, and I'll put it in the description. Okay, all this is, is you have some flex lines. You can see they're aluminum, silver inside. And they're held on with wire ties, both ends. And let me see it here. Okay, I don't know how well you can see this. But there's a piece of tape here. Um, there's not a tear or nothing. There's one on each end. And what that is, there's a coil spring in here. Well, at the end of the coil, it's sticking out. So they just took some, looks like electrical tape or something, and put over top of that. So that's nothing to worry about. Okay, so now when it, when this goes up, these don't line up. Uh, they, they have them like this for shipping. So what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to turn the whole thing 90 degrees. And that'll be how it hooks up. So you just turn this one the same way. That one was a little tighter, so they will line up with your ports that go to your ductwork. Okay, I've already taken readings from the vents um, for the airflow. I also did the return through here at different stages. There was absolutely no airflow coming through here. I, I couldn't get it to spin for nothing. And I also took uh, decibel readings just to see... Uh, how noisy it was now and what the after effects going to be all right so i think that's it uh let's get to tearing this thing apart okay first thing you want to do is you want to take your uh vent covers off be very careful taking them off they're they're easy to uh break and sometimes i have trouble with this i don't know why and they just slide out Maybe if I had fingernails, I'd be able to grab it, but I, I break them all the time. Okay, next thing you want to do, you want to take these four screws out. Okay, one thing I was looking at when I took this down. Um, you have these dump, dump vents on the ends. And uh, after I put it back together, I turned the AC on, and I noticed there's a lot of air, even with these closed, how much is coming out. So it might actually be a good idea to tape these off inside. Uh, the reason being is you're going to be drawing air in through there now if that was open. So now you have unfiltered air going up into your coils. So I'm going to go ahead and tape, tape these up real good. Now... You're still, you still might get a little bit coming around the edges going in, but uh, just in case, if one of these should happen to pop open, that is a lot of airflow going through there. 
Okay, next thing we want to take off is, I believe they call this the chute. And there's four screws. And these are all uh, number two square head screws. All right, now you're not going to reuse this, but uh, they suggest you uh, save it. We'll get uh, to that in a little bit. So find a place to store it and don't break it. Next thing you want to take out is this divider in here. Uh, you'll also be saving that for uh, in case you want to revert back to the original. So I had already taped mine up. I check this every year. And um, I'm going to have to cut it out because I, I taped it in. Now normally this is just wedged in there. But uh, like I said, when I originally looked at this after I purchased the camper, I taped it in just just so it doesn't move and uh, to seal it off from airflow and I did a pretty good job taping it <laughs> okay like I said you want to save this too okay next thing I want to do I want to go back over my uh, tape to make sure everything's okay and since I cut that out I don't want any pieces flapping around it's going to flutter up there and make noises so I'm going to try to clean this up the best I can. And if I have to put any more on, I will. Yeah, there's two reasons I check this in the spring. Um, one, in case anything come undone. The other reason is if it did come in undone a little bit and you got it up there flapping, you're going to be wondering what that noise is. Okay, everything looks good up here. Um, one thing I would also do is I would check these bolts. There's four of them that hold the uh, air conditioner onto the roof. Uh, this is a very well-known place for a leak. People don't check it. So that's why it's important every spring or when you're putting your camper away in the fall to take all this down, check your tape for one thing, but also check these bolts. These get loose. It starts shimmying around, water comes in, it could be a while, a while before you know it. So there's little tabs on here, um, they're hard to see now since I have it taped up. But it, the tab is shorter than the gasket itself. So as you're tightening, tightening it down, the gas will come and get closer to the roof. Supposedly once it hits the roof, it's done. There is a torque setting for these. I had it in my files and I cannot find it. So anyway, let me bring you in a little closer and I'll show you what's going on here. Okay, so here are the, uh, these are the ports that are going into your duct work. There's your duct, quack quack. And um, this piece here is going to fit in there, hopefully. Okay, so basically what happens here is your warm air goes up through here, goes through your coil, and the fan here shoots it back down. Okay, basically all, all we're going to do is we're going to put this side up into here first. And just push it up there, and it snaps in pretty good. I mean it's it's in there like i said i had to get a crowbar to uh get it out of there when i did a dry fit okay next thing we're going to do is we're going to take these and put them in there now each manufacturer has a different size hole so you're just going to have to do the best you can here you have to get it back behind the bolt here. I don't know if you can see that, but you got to get it back behind the bolt. Hopefully there's enough room there that once you slide that in, you can maybe get the top in and push in on the bottom. That's pretty much what I did. So this one's going to be a harder one just because where it's at. But she's in. If you take a look up here you see there is a hole there's a very small hole on the other side but that could be just because uh, when I taped it up so what we're going to do now is we're going to take that tape that they gave us and tape this whole thing up 
Okay, I got everything taped up. This side was real easy. I was in and out in no time. This side, I don't know if it's because I was leaning back, but it put up a little bit of a fight. Uh, it'd be a lot easier if the screws weren't in here. So basically what this does is it eliminates this divider in your plenum. So now this is pretty much what this is doing. And there's two reasons they tell you not to throw this away. One, if you want to convert back to the original, like if I was to sell this camper, this doesn't increase the value. So you might as well take it with you and possibly put it on your next one or give it to somebody, whatever. But another thing is, they said that in real high humidity situations, this could sweat. So that might be a maybe a design upgrade for them to do in the future. Maybe insulate this piece a little bit better so it doesn't sweat. But if that does happen, you have to put this back in and that'll keep some of the air from going across this and making it sweat. So you definitely need to save this. But like I said, save both pieces. All right, let me bring you in and show you my wonderful tape job. Okay, I don't know how well you can see. I'll put a little light on there. But that's my wonderful tape job. This side here was a pain in the butt. But it's all done. Okay, and as you can see, I did tape this up. I don't know if it's going to matter, but just my thinking is if one, one of these louvers should come open, now you're sucking unfiltered air in across your coil. And that is definitely no good. You're going to get a little bit coming from around the sides coming in. Um, you can fix that possibly by... I don't know. I don't even know if you can put a gasket around there. Yeah, you should be able to. All right, so I'm going to get this back together. We're going to fire it up. I'm going to take some readings and compare. I'm thinking it's going to do a pretty good job. All right, be back in a minute. Okay, so I got the uh, cover put on. I'm putting this filter in. And let me bring you in and show you what I did. We're not supposed to see foil here. So I got to take it back down. Okay, I got a phone call yesterday and I had to run, but we got it all finished. So I want to get some readings and then uh, we'll get back to you. Okay, the results are in. Um, I did make one mistake. Um, that is that I didn't try it on low. I, sh I should have did it. I'm kicking myself in the butt now. The reason is um, on high with my app on my phone i was getting between 64 and 66 decibels um, now on high i'm getting between 60 and 62 which isn't that much of a reduction but i tried it on low and it is very quiet on low i was really surprised and like i said i'm kicking myself in the butt for not uh getting readings on it Okay, so my, my meter I'm using, I'm only measuring uh, velocity, feet per minute. Um, in order for me to do CFM, I'd have to get a cone on there, and I just didn't feel like doing it. But it gives me a, a pretty good idea of uh, airflow coming, coming out. Okay, my biggest difference was in the return here on this vent. These two sections here, I was getting no airflow at all. And now I'm getting it all the way across the vent on both sides, which I think is going to be a lot more efficient for the uh, air conditioner. And it's ranging anywhere from 230 CFM to 350 CFM. Before I was, before I was getting like six and 700 out of both of these two. So now it's sucking probably the same amount of air but over a larger area instead of just this area right here. Okay, then in the bathroom for uh, decibels, I was getting between 44 and 46. Now I'm getting between 40 and 42. So it's not that much of a reduction, but it's not bad. But like I said, had I tried it on low, I think the readings would have been a lot different. Okay, so on this vent up here, which you can't see, Right now I'm getting 1,350. Before I was getting 1,275, so it's an additional 75 feet per minute. And then on the vent over here, which I think you can see, yes. Um, now I'm getting 1050. Before I was getting a little under 1,000, like 9, 990. 
So I got about 50, 50, 55, 60 additional feet per minute. And then in the bathroom, now I'm getting uh, 850 before I was getting around 800. Now this is, this isn't exact. If you move it around, you get different readings, but I kept moving around trying to get the high, highest reading I could. Okay, so was this a success? I'm gonna say it was. Um, on low, I'm gonna turn it on now. I'm gonna turn it on high, and then I'll turn it on low, and you can hear the difference in it. But um, normally at night, we will run this on low, and when it kicks on, it wakes me up. I don't think I'm gonna have that problem anymore. So let me turn this on high. You can hear what it sounds like, then I'll do low, and then you can hear what that sounds like. Okay, this is on high, and then I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on low, and you can uh, see the difference between the two. Okay, and click, that's low. So I don't know how well you can hear that, what the difference between them are, but bel believe me, this is a lot quieter than what it was on low. Okay, now um, I think it's RV Airflow sells a styrofoam one that fits up in here. I'd like to get a hold of one and compare it just to see which, which one's better. And I'm concerned about the moisture is issue and high humidity, if they have the same issue with that one or not. But all in all, I think, um, I think it was well worth the money, especially on low. Uh, get a good night's sleep, it won't wake me up every time. And if you happen to be looking in the background here on a bed, we also picked these up at the Hershey Show. I will be doing a video on it. It is a more ride uh, step tread. Um, when we was at the National Rally, they had some prototypes there. So they finally come out with them. So I'm, I have one on now. I'm going to do a video on installing the other three. But so far, I'm liking the one. Okay, so once again, thanks for checking it out. We'll see you all next time. Bye.